Hello and welcome to Perk Up with Dr. Spearman. I am the president of Rock Valley College and today I want to talk about persistence, enrollment, retention, and completion. In other words, student success. We believe in a student first approach at Rock Valley College and I am excited to talk to one of our very own faculty members, Dr. Mickey Pacino. And Dr. Pacino has been teaching or instructing speech for several years now at Rock Valley College and I am going to have her introduce herself. And after she introduces herself, I have asked her to talk about online learning and the impacts of online learning in regards to, you guessed it, persistence, enrollment, retention, and completion. In other words, PERC. So thank you, Dr. Pacino, for being here. I am going to hand it over to you to introduce yourself and speak about online retention. Sure. So first I'd like to introduce myself. I, I am Mickey Bacino. I've been teaching at Rock Valley for 24 years. I am a graduate of Rock Valley College with my Associate in Arts. I love teaching speech, public speaking, and uh, my dissertation was student satisfaction with online learning. So I've been teaching online for almost 20 years and I find that it increases every year in its popularity and also in the problems that online learning can pose. So I'm very excited to be talking to you today. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. And again, welcome to uh, the first episode. And thank you for not just uh, being our first guest, but helping me to produce this as well. And of course, <laughs> Nate is here as well. And we thank Nate for his work. Yes. So now, Dr. Bacino, mm -hmm. can you speak to us and summarize uh, online learning from your perspective and what it means to you as a faculty member at Rock Valley College? Sure, sure. So as I said, I've been teaching almost 20 years online and it's gone through lots of changes. And when I started my dissertation, I actually started with faculty satisfaction with online teaching and quickly realized that it really is the student who needs to be satisfied with online learning or there won't be any success in student learning. So I switched it and I began to study all of the components that go into successful online teaching so that the student is satisfied, hence completes the course and is successful. And about a year ago, uh, our former president asked if I would head up an initiative because we are a little bit behind at Rock Valley College as most community colleges are behind in some of the trends with online learning and some of the techniques to successful online teaching. And so I began that initiative and lo and behold, <laughs> COVID-19 <laughs> came and sort of exasperated all of my plans and all of my studies and all of my research. And uh, so it's been quite a journey the last six months, but well worth it. Uh, because all of my learning of online teaching and all of my research and all of my communication with students has proven to be handy in preparing for this completely online world that we're in now. Thank you. So mm -hmm. you mentioned <laughs> COVID-19 and of course that is so prevalent in our society today and has a strong impact on what we do as far as delivering education, uh, curriculum, how we engage students. What has been your, or maybe, let me ask it this way. I understand that you get it, the online learning. It's a part of your dissertation. But what has been the perspective of faculty members, uh, especially faculty that have not been uh, traditionally teaching online. Uh, so many people think about the students and their level of transitioning or anxiety or transitioning with online learning, but what about the, from the faculty's perspective, what are some of the things faculty have to deal with in delivering online curriculum? Well, there, there's lots of levels because uh, 20 years ago I was really chatting with faculty about the worthiness of online classes and making sure that everybody knew they weren't a sham and making sure we separated ourselves from maybe the for-profit colleges that weren't 
putting as much emphasis on quality online courses. And so that sort of has been ongoing, that faculty really looked at online classes as not as rigorous as a face-to-face -face class or a hybrid class. And then we sort of transitioned into understanding that this is what the world wants, is online classes. And that's what I've been working on for the past three years, is getting people trained and qualified to teach online and then when we made the transition to completely online there it became very evident that there is a broad spectrum of skill level of teaching online and also interest in teaching online and it takes a lot of work it's not you take your handouts and your textbook and you throw it all online and you don't have to do anything there's a lot of different elements that go into online teaching that are very different from face to face that if a faculty member doesn't want to put that extra effort in, the class will suffer and, and it will be difficult for the student to, to get the information and to learn the, the content. There is a community of inquiry theory that talks about you have to have you have to have that interaction between faculty to student, you have to have interaction between student and student, and you have to have interaction between student and content. That's the, what they have to learn. And if you don't hit all three, then the student's going to really struggle, and, it's, and it makes it difficult. On top of that, you want to have some type of synchronous component where you are touching base with the student. Ever since classes started online 20 years ago, students feel isolated in an online environment. And if the teacher doesn't make that extra effort, which is very foreign to faculty members who have never taught online, then the student feels even more lost. They feel even more isolated. So it's not, it's not as simple as, hey, do you like teaching online? Because there's just so much more that goes into it that if you are a faculty member who's been teaching for 20, 25 years, it's like teaching an old dog new tricks. It, it's very, very difficult to switch that mode of delivery and, and become acquainted with some of the techniques like a synchronous component when you've never done it and and so it, it was a very it was a struggle and a lot, I know a lot of faculty members struggled more than others if they'd never used Eagle which is our LMS canvas then they had an even bigger struggle because they now had to learn how to use canvas and then they had to learn uh, how do you set up a class and then they had to learn well then what's the synchronous component there's just a lot that goes into it that I believe a lot of the faculty member had no idea that there was that much that went into it. So, mm -hmm. so you mentioned, you know, we're in the world of higher education, and you're talking about synchronous versus asynchronous. Mm -hmm. You're talking about LMS or learning management system, mm -hmm. and whether you call it Eagle or Canvas. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know that people outside of our profession understand the complexities of higher education. And so now you have faculty who are making adjustments uh, parallel to students who are making adjustments. Mm -hmm. And then we have our community. We are a community college, uh, and we don't always think about the impact of what we do on our community. So earlier we spoke about, or prior to this, we spoke a little bit about digital divide. And so if you could, please speak to what digital divide means to you. What does that impact on our community and how does that then relate to our students on campus? When we first went into COVID, I guess we can use that phrase. <laughs> we, uh, we meaning the team, Nate, John Filicaro and Heather Moore, and the team met with Lynn Shattuck, who's our disability coordinator. And our focus was how do we get all of our faculty trained so that they can teach quality courses. We then were quickly thrust into we need to be concerned about our students because there's a lot of issues going on when we just drastically switch to uh, strictly online. Uh, one of the things that we talked about with the disabilities was we needed to make sure everything was captioned. and. The, the, that's part of the disconnect between 
Rock Valley College and our students when we're just so accustomed to face-to-face -face classes. The digital divide speaks more to our students who had no laptops, had no internet, had no access to the classes, had no way to learn, had no way to attend, to get the information that they needed to complete the courses that really brought to light the, the digital divide, which has been <laughs> in existence forever. And it, it really made it prominent that there is a discrepancy between those that just have the access to the internet and have a computer and those who do not. And it just threw another monkey wrench into now we have to be concerned about this. So then we started making sure that our students were taken care of because most of our students come from this community and I don't know how many stories they've read, but there are stories all over the country about students who have to go to Taco Bell to access the internet, or students who have to go uh, on, online at four in the morning because there's four other people in the household who need to use the computer. And it, it really makes it clear that we can't just assume anything. We have to make sure that we are not just blanketing our adjustment to, uh, to completely online, but that we are understanding that not only are there students who do not have a computer and internet, but they're also faculty members. And yes. the digital divide is impactful on completion because you can't complete a class if you can't access it, to, to be uh, just basic. And when, when, that, when we went into COVID, we started making sure that there was a rental program for laptops, but you know, these quick fixes are not the long-term fix, in my opinion. I think we need to be more aware of what those disadvantages to online learning are, and the digital divide is obviously the biggest one because they're, they're, we can't have that big of a discrepancy between those that have and those that have not. When I was, when I first attended Rock Valley College and I was a single mother, there would have been no way I could have just purchased a laptop and had internet access. I, there was no money, and so, uh, and that would have been a shame because obviously I wanted to go to college and I wanted to get my degree, and I, I didn't want to wait a year or two years until COVID was done. I wanted to continue and I wanted to make sure that I completed. And so I really, I really have a affinity towards people who are that dedicated and that devoted. They just don't have the means to participate right now. I thank you for sharing that and allowing us into uh, this digital divide, di digital divide from your lens. Uh, like you said, digital divide has been around for a long time. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been in higher education for over 20 some years and I remember us speaking to the digital divide in pre-college program at a previous institution. Uh, so many students that are, would be defined under lower socioeconomic status do not have the means to purchase a laptop. They do not have the means to have internet access at the level that we would need it for courses. But you also mentioned that there are some professionals that may be hired here that do not have the means to have a laptop especially their own laptop at home uh, and uh, may not have the means to have internet to the level that they need it. And so digital divide is important and in our community and as a community college, you have clearly uh, made sure that we understood how it impacts, I believe, our students and our professionals, our community. So I want to just thank you uh, for uh, sharing that. You also mentioned uh, disadvantages and advantages. Can you speak a little bit more about uh, what do you feel are the advantages to online learning versus the disadvantages to online learning? Sure. Well, the, the, the biggest advantage to online learning would be the, the, the time. So if you are full-time working and you can only do homework from midnight to two in the morning, Online learning makes it so that you can be successful. 
and if you don't have to be physically in a classroom or physically online at a certain time and you can manage your time that way one thing I found out from doing the research because my research was on Rock Valley College students is the flexibility and the time management was the biggest draw to the to the online classes now that we're completely online I think that's even more important because you have students who are parents who are homeschooling their children or you know maybe taking them back and forth to school in addition to taking classes maybe in addition to having to work or picking up another job because our economy is being impacted by COVID so the online alternative to face-to-face -face or hybrid makes it so that they can take classes and they can complete the work in their own time as a result of my research, I switched our, we have some upper level classes in speech, 201 and 202, that I switched to completely self-paced because of that. And I personally, and I, I let all my faculty know this, that I have switched my philosophy of teaching to, I open everything up on the first day. I have due dates, but they're a little bit loose. I let them work ahead if they want to work ahead and they work at their own pace. I only ask them to be done with half of the class by midterm and then they know the end date for the end of the class. And I have found my students to be extremely successful. My completion rate definitely went up because they could manage their time, as long as they were good at that, <laughs> then they, they completed the course and they, they got all the information and, and they appreciated the fact that the assignment didn't just close down or they couldn't access things, they couldn't move ahead if they wanted to move ahead. Do all the students work ahead? No, obviously not. But do I have some students who are struggling at, at midterm to make sure they're halfway done? Yes, but I would say the majority of my students definitely see my suggested due dates and they kind of stay on track or they work ahead and that allows that advantage of flexible time to to work in their in to their advantage so that to me is the biggest advantage to online learning I also think that we are in an age of anxiety and mental struggles and I think that when you are the type of student who appreciates more participating from a distance online learning is definitely an advantage it makes it so that you're not thrust into this group learning or having to be involved in groups where you just don't feel comfortable with that. In speech, it's been uh, extremely helpful. And I've noticed that students really appreciate the online, having the online option, which we've had for 20 years, because they, they do have social anxiety, in addition to their speaking anxiety, which everybody has. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so so that's, that's another advantage to the online learning. The disadvantages, which we are now is coming to the forefront, is that it is much more difficult for a faculty member to put together a really solid quality online course. So the students are struggling with, it's, it's a whole different uh, form of, of delivery, and so the students are now struggling with how do I learn this way, which is completely new to me, and I don't have a class that's really set up to promote my, my uh, success in this course. So that is a disadvantage. It is a little bit trickier to teach online than it is to teach face-to-face -face because that's how people have been learning for a hundred years. Uh, the, the other disadvantage is you, uh, we all know that students learn from role modeling the teacher and so you pick up on tone of voice, you pick up on body language, sometimes a theory or a concept or uh, you know fractions and equations and all of the other mathematical and scientific terms are learned easier if they can watch the faculty member or the professor explain it. That's, that's just communication. So that, that is a disadvantage that's gone and there's been a lot of studies to try to figure out how do we replace that? How do we replace the teacher who's standing in front of the, of the class? And that's where discussion boards that promotes participation from the faculty member and the students come in. That's where these synchronous components. Now we have Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> and so everybody's Zooming and everybody is using the conference function and Microsoft Teams. And so 
we're learning and you know I guess one positive from COVID is that everybody has learned these synchronous techniques of how to teach online. That's been a plus because that used to be a huge disadvantage <laughs> is that there was a disconnect. You, you didn't even, if you didn't see your professor, you didn't get to know the professor, you didn't really have the, the information sink in the way it does for a face-to-face -face or hybrid. And so we're trying to take advantage of that uh, big disadvantage to online learning. And then the digital divide, which we've already talked about. Well, as you were speaking, I started going down memory lane of my speech class, and I started <laughs> thinking about verbal and nonverbal communication mm -hmm. skills. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for uh, <laughs> allowing Doing a this. speech plug. Uh, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, another, I guess, topic, when we think about PERC, mm -hmm. again, persistence, enrollment, retention, completion, mm -hmm. uh, overall student success, student engagement is critical to student success. And you mentioned that, how they engage, but their comfort level with engaging online but then there's the faculty's comfort level with engaging online. But then there's this other part about sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. And we know that there's a positive correlation between students' sense of belonging and their success on campus. Mm -hmm. How do, how should faculty members address or consider sense of belonging through online learning? <laughs> <laughs> That's a big question, <laughs> mostly because we, so just to catch you up, we, when we went into COVID, we wanted to make sure that all of our faculty members were trained and qualified to teach online. And so we designed, and when I say we, we mean, I mean Nate, Heather Moore, and, and John Filicaro designed a course that the faculty member would take. And part of the course, they were a student so they could experience what it, it's like to take an online course as a student. And then the other part was helping them design their course. Then after they did that, we went through a review session. And the review session was really the, the faculty member presenting their course and going over, we had a rubric and we talked about, are you doing this and this and are you engaging with the student? And one thing that I took away from all of those review sessions, which I think was 100, 200 of them, we, uh, is that faculty members do things very, very differently. And I think it was towards the beginning, I'd like to say it was towards the beginning, I quickly said to the faculty member, whatever has worked for you in the face-to-face -face classroom, mm -hmm. try to figure out how to now transition to the online learning environment. So if you were a dynamic speaker, I would turn to Zoom or I would try to integrate something or record a video of yourself even if you wanted to so that your personality could shine through because whatever success that you experienced as a face-to-face -face teacher, we now have to figure out how to translate that into the online learning environment. And that's very tricky and it's not sort of a, all you have to do is this. All you have to do is a Zoom, or all you have to do is a recorded video. It's very different for faculty members. I think a lot of our faculty members have a different philosophy of teaching. And some rely very heavily on sort of on the fly and integrate a lot of personal stories. Others stay strictly by the textbook. And, and so we really decided as a team that we wanted the faculty member to focus on what their strength was as they've experienced in the face-to-face -face classroom. And that's why I said your question is kind of really big because it's, it's difficult to answer. There's not a one answer, here's what every faculty member should do. I personally believe there should be a synchronous component in every class, but that's because that sense of belonging, the sense of community, the, the eliminating the sense of isolation, it can only be achieved if you establish a rapport, if you establish a relationship. And that's just, you know, basic knowledge, basic teaching 101. And so how you get to that point is going to vary depending on the teacher's style, personality, philosophy. But I think they, I think most of them understood what we were talking about and then went back and designed their class. 
there's teachers who integrate videos and, and they go to all these different sites that provide academic and scholarly videos. And Nate even commented on some of the videos that <clears throat> were presented in the review sessions because they were so cool. And they were, they were, they integrated the content with kind of either pop culture or other items or anything to get the student to be engaged and to try to establish some type of commonality, I think is important. Thank you for sharing that. So this provides faculty members with a chance to highlight their skills virtually. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't necessarily have to change who they are as a faculty member. Uh, however, if they wanted to, it gives them opportunity to rebrand themselves as well. Uh, and you mentioned the asynchronous versus synchronous. Um, just briefly define asynchronous and synchronous. Asynchronous means that the student does not have to be online in attendance virtually at the exact same time that the faculty member is. Synchronous means that everybody's, everybody's at the party at the same time. And everybody is there engaging and participating at the same time. So I guess you could think of it as live. Everybody is live. Where asynchronous is you post a video or you post the assignment or you post something that the student can then view or read or learn whenever they want. Now, this goes back to what I was saying earlier. One of the advantages to online learning is that you do have that flexibility to learn whenever you want, that the timing of it is not as rigid as a face-to-face -face class that meets 9 to 10, 15. So it, it's, a, it's a very thin line that you have to kind of walk because, you know, there's advantages and disadvantages to both. And trying to figure out what those advantages and disadvantages are and tackling them in an online environment is really where the struggles and the challenges come in because you have to consider that we have working students who could be parents, you know, everything that I said before, but you also have to offer them this flexibility of online learning. And so the asynchronous synchronous debate it is a hot one right now. <laughs> and uh, I just personally have found that the synchronous component has worked really well for me. And I, I typically do a lecture on Zoom that I record that they can attend but that if you can't attend it, you can, you can view it later. What's clear is that there are various learning styles, but there's also various teaching styles. Mm -hmm. And so then there's layers between that. Um, I always think about, you know, sometimes people want to define people as uh, extroverted and introverted. Well, there's layers of being introverted and layers of being extroverted, and that influences how you engage people. Mm -hmm. And sometimes as a community, as an education community, we forget that piece, that there's still complexities within those relationships, and there's various dynamics that impact how we communicate, and whether or not that's effective really depends on the person that's also receiving that communication. Uh, so thank you for uh, sharing that with me. I appreciate that. Uh, and I also want to thank you, uh, Dr. Bazzino, for allowing us, us, the Golden Eagle family, to think about online learning from your lens, somebody who's been doing it for a long time, someone who's clearly passionate about it, someone who's clearly successful in implementing online learning components. So thank you for that. Now, in in closing, I want you to think about a student. Think about a time where you had a student who's been successful in online learning. You know, we all have this uh, list. I was going to say a short list of students, but <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not necessarily a short list. But if you have that student in mind, and you can think about that student's situation or circumstance and how they were able to overcome, persist through some of their situations and still experience student success. Uh, I would like you to look into the camera and share that story as we close today. 
Are you able to do that? Sure, sure. I mean, well, first of all, I, I, before I look into the camera, I um, uh, do have a passion for teaching, and I think it's because I've always put the student first. When I was the single mom trying to get my associate's degree, there were lots of awesome teachers throughout my academic journey that not only gave me the academic courage to keep going, but also the personal and the mental courage. And I thought a long time ago, before I even knew I was going to be a teacher, knew that if you don't take advantage of some of these people along the way and listen to them and take to heart what they're saying to you, you're never going to move forward and you're never going to be successful. And so when I did become a teacher, I did realize very quickly that I could have an impact on people and that particularly students and that I wanted to make sure that I shared my experiences and that I shared my journey and my persistence and, and knew that they had it in them to complete and to be successful academically and whatever they wanted to do, but that they really had to focus and they really had to devote themselves to keeping their eye on the prize because mm. I think too often life gets in the way and then we don't, we, we get discouraged or we, we lose our focus and we figure, you know what, it's easier to just get a full-time job or it's just easier to drop out. You know, I tried and I just want to, I, I've always wanted to sort of impart my dedication and my devotion to wanting to complete because I think that that is a personal success that no one can take away from you. And one student in particular that I remember uh, because she was also a single mom and she had some adversity in her life that I can't even imagine. And <clears throat> she came from another country. She actually came from Iraq. And she would come to my office every day. And there were simple things like copy and paste that she didn't know what I was talking about. And so I, of course, went you know, and met with her every day and went over the lecture and anything that she had problems with. And at the end of the semester, she was so thankful for just going above and beyond, which I didn't even really consider above and beyond, showing a student how to copy and paste, or <laughs> showing a student what Google Scholar is. I, I don't consider that going above and beyond, but, but she did, and she appreciated it, and I know that she graduated, I know she went on, and uh, this was a while ago, and I know she's done at NIU. And you know, she's just one student who I know was successful because, hopefully, because I tried to help out and in her eyes went above and beyond. And I think sometimes faculty members forget that small gestures like that of going above and beyond, that we may not consider going above and beyond, but they certainly do, is what is the key to helping them be successful and complete and go on and just stay focused, which is really what, what I believe. So there you have it. First episode of Perk Up with Dr. Spearman. And I am so appreciative that Dr. Mickey Bassino spoke to us today about online learning. Uh, it's really, if you were really paying attention to the message, uh, it's about your willingness to go above and beyond. Uh, but that is something that you learn. It's uh, something that she was able to do as an individual, as a single parent. It was something that she had embedded in her, and she's taken her personal experience and integrated that into her professional life, her professional style of course delivery, of engaging students. Completion is real. Completion is important to all of us. And we can't complete our goals if we're not willing to persist, uh, if we're not willing to be retained. And what that really means is that students have to understand that they have to be willing to overcome some of the issues that they're dealing with, the issues that are impacting them in life, that's impacting them in their community. Uh, but if you're willing to do that, and you're willing to overcome, and you're willing to still come to class, engage online learning or face-to-face -face when we're back to face-to-face, -to -face, 
you would be surprised how many faculty members, how many RVC employees are willing to help. So once again, thank you for all that you do uh, when it comes to, and when I say thank you for all you do, I'm talking about students and the ability for students to overcome. And thank you to faculty, uh, faculty like Dr. Pacino for their willingness to go above and beyond. Again, thank you. This is our first episode, our pilot episode of Perk Up, and I thank you for tuning in.